and welcome to China Talks, an exploration of China through the eyes of those who know. China's entrepreneurial ecosystem is steadily developing. To talk about entrepreneurship in China and the development of this ecosystem, I caught up with Shlomo Freund, founder of StartupNoodle.com. Shlomo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for Now, you came to China as a budding entrepreneur. So, how daunting was that? And how difficult is it for a startup business in China to gain traction? So, I actually became, came to China, I am an entrepreneur from Israel, and I came to China as an entrepreneur, but I haven't started as an entrepreneur in China. Um, and it was quite difficult at the beginning to start a new job in a new culture here in China. Um, but uh, at the last uh, year and a half since we came, uh, it became uh, gradually better, and uh, I'm very happy with the place I am right now. Um, I see this as a great opportunity for entrepreneurs. Um, it's developing really fast and it's coming from the startup nation uh, and coming from Tel Aviv and then which is well developed there and, and afterwards coming here is really exciting for me. Okay, can you talk a little bit about your own ventures and how they fared over the past year or so? Yeah, um, so I started Startup Noodle about a year ago. Um, it was already after we've been to China and I've learned what's going on here. I've been working for a couple of months. And um, I said to myself, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I want to help other entrepreneurs coming here. And um, I need to publish what's going on here and help them to, to arrive. And this, this whole thing started. So um, it started with a couple of posts i uh, written about. And after, um, and then it gradually became, I mean, I got more traffic and I got more people coming in and asking questions. Um, we're starting our new project with uh, interviews of other entrepreneurs here in China. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, but there are others who are much more experienced than me. So what we do, um, we help um, students be connected with those entrepreneurs then interview them either on video or text or voice, whatever they prefer, then put it, put it on the website. Um, and that helps them to actually learn from those entrepreneurs um, on their ventures or whatever subjects they're interested in. And they bring us back the interviews, so that would be widespread for everybody. Where do you see this project going in the future? Um, so um, we just started. Uh, we're now, um, we have many concepts contacts with other entrepreneurs and we're now collecting the, the students and people who want to join in. I see that as, com as, as a bulk of media people can just go and just go through and learn a lot. That's what I want to do and, and help. That, that's the main thing. Startup Noodle is about helping. It's about helping others. How healthy do you think the startup ecosystem is here in Beijing? <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because this is one of the subjects that uh, I've been talking about lately, recently. Um, so, I see the startup ecosystem as here in, I know Beijing, as actually two ecosystems. Um, there is uh, one ecosystem for the Chinese entrepreneurs and there is one for the foreigners. Um, I'm really not happy about it and I think this should be changed and um, there should be actually one big ecosystem that supports itself um, as um, we're putting up too much energy in supporting two of them. And, and that's wrong in my opinion. Is Startup Noodle trying to bridge this gap in a way? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we do try to do it. Um, I'm the organizer of the Lean Startup Meetup. Um, there are about um, 350 members now on, the, on that meetup. Um, and I'm very happy to say that about half and half are, half are Chinese and half of are foreigners. So, so that's working well. Um, but I also think that people need to make the effort to actually communicate with the other side, even with a, their broken language, with my broken Chinese or with someone's uh, broken English, just to start communicating. Um, I'll tell you a story. I had um, about three months ago or two months ago, uh, I went to a Chinese entrepreneurs meeting. Um, and there was a lecture and uh, I sat there, I understood some of it, not so much. But the thing is that the, um, the best thing ha happened afterwards 
And what happened is that um, after that event, I started talking to all the, the entrepreneurs there. And you know, they're coming, they're taking photos with me and all that. But the, the good thing is that now we have a waiting group together and you, we're chatting, so, so I'm part of that. So you, you do create that communication. Um, and that's a very, very small change, but very important to make that communication and flow of information. All right, now, as someone who's doing it themselves, what do people need to be aware of when they come to China to pursue entrepreneurship? Um, they need to know it's, it's, it's not easy, um, but um, it is something that can be accomplished. Because um, actually, I, I um, interviewed Richard Robinson about two weeks ago. And I asked him the same question, I mean, um, in terms of culture and language. And he said something very interesting. He said, um, he gave me a few examples of people who actually, their Chinese is not great, and they still do great stuff here, being very successful entrepreneurs, even though um, they're not fully immersed in the, in the culture, in the, in the language. Um, so it's very good to have it. I'm totally in favor of that but it's not a necessity. Okay. Now you offer advice to fellow entrepreneurs and fellow startups. Now, what are some of the most common queries or questions that people pose to you? Um, so it's not necessarily only for startups or entrepreneurs, it's also, also for companies who want to uh, I do consulting for. Um, the most common thing people ask is um, about the Chinese market and how to enter the Chinese market. Um, now, for someone who's here, you probably think, oh, I should actually say to everybody, just come here, you know, it's great, uh, it's a big market. Um, and that's not always the, the thing to do for them. Um, I had entrepreneurs asking about, um, <clears throat> they want to make a, a uh, they want to, to, to create a company here in Beijing, and but they're actually from Malaysia. And I told them, you know, the best thing to start your, your, your uh, venture is actually at home. You know the people, you have the contacts. Um, start there, grow from there, and then come do it in China. It will be much, much harder doing it here. On the other hand, there are companies um, who ask about uh, market entry in terms of uh, cooperations with other companies or vendors and stuff like that. So it really depends, but everybody are tapping the Chinese market and checking it, that's for sure. Now, who do you turn to if you need advice? <laughs> um, so I have, uh, at the last year, I say, I've been uh, a lot in the tech and entrepreneurship community here in Beijing. So I've got a lot of friends and I, I consult with them. But, you know, sometimes there is not a right answer. Right. You just, that, that's entrepreneurship. That's what, it could, that's what you do. Right. You're also a partner to Acora Media and you make bespoke mobile apps for businesses. Now, yeah. Do you think startups are making use of mobile apps or do you think this is somewhere that startups in China are, are falling short? Um, startups, um, I don't think startups are falling short in, in, in with apps in China. Uh, what does falling short are actually companies who want to have apps of their own. So the business is not the app, but they want an app uh, to enhance their business somewhere, somehow, maybe marketing, maybe sales, it really depends. Um, so you've got clients coming in and say, we want an app, and then part of our job is to consulting for them and tell them, you know, you need to put this aligned with your business model. It's not just have an app, yeah, have an app, because then you're shifting. the Instead of marketing your product, you're shifting this to marketing your app, so, so what's the thing? So, but apps have... Uh, very big advantage, uh, which is of course the phone and or their their mobile. So you can create very interesting business models with those and actually encourage people to download the apps and use them. Let's say if someone gets a discount on something, and and uh, if he takes a picture of I don't know um, the the course uh, uh, he's e about to eat, then he'll get a discount. That will make someone actually download the app. And the restaurant doesn't have to doesn't have to market the app because th that's like th the natural process of using the app. Um, but what will happen is that after he takes that picture and then uh, posting that online on his uh, any uh, social network, his friend would see it that he's in that restaurant. That will bring more customers to the restaurant. 
So that's something you can create with an app, which is uh, which is very it's very advanced, and you can you can actually uh, do a smart marketing. Do you think the rise of social media in China at the moment is um, is helping entrepreneurship? Um, or do you think because because social media is quite immature compared to say Twitter in the West or other mm -hmm. the other formats of social media, do you think it it kind of hinders startup businesses here? I think it's just I think it's just different, you know. Um, every every place has its uh, unique impacts and things that are right for that place. Um, so. The way it develops right now is the right way to develop for the Chinese ecosystem. Um, yeah, and it's different from what's happening outside, uh, out of China. I totally agree with that and totally support that. That's fine. It's just different. Okay, Shlomo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for talking in such in-depth. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much. If you have any questions or suggestions about today's topic, please feel free to write in at the email address down below and be sure to join us again for another edition of China Talks. Yeah.